everybody, welcome back to Let's Go Design. It's time for project number two, a single person multi-sports practice cage. We're here at Assabet Valley High School to meet with some up and coming engineers and to go out on the practice field and meet with some athletes. Let's go inside and meet the instructor, Bryant LaFlam. Wow, this place is impressive. Hey, Bryant. Welcome, Jeremy. Thanks. Glad you could make it out today. Uh, students are really excited to have you here and uh, we'd like to take you in and show cool. you around. Here we are over in the manual milling area. We have uh, surface grinders, we have bridge port type mills, we have manual lathes and the students learn all these great skills over here of what it feels like to cut metal and later on they advance onto the computerized uh, numerical control machines, the CNC machines where solid work really starts to play a big role in that. Hey guys, I'd like you to come join around and uh, meet Jeremy from Let's Go Design. Oh, cool. What's up, guys? Hey, it's a cool shop you have here. Oh, thanks. What are you working on? Building a robot. Yeah? Yeah. Using any software? CAD? Solid works all the way. <laughs> nice. So I need your help with something. I got a new project of my own. It's going to be a multi-sport practice cage. And it's going to allow you to play multiple sports as an individual, similar to like a batting cage, but we're going to spice it up. So what sports are you thinking about? We're going to let the audience vote on that. I'm thinking football, soccer, hockey. It's going to have to be pretty big. Well, that'll be the challenge. Hopefully we can you know, expand and collapse it. I could use SOLIDWORKS configurations to play around with the design too, make sure everything fits. When you put ball, you have to catch it some way or another. Now, actually, we need to not only worry about how the ball gets fed into the machine and what type of ball it is, but containment's gonna be an issue inside the cage. The innovation I'm hoping for is to move the player around so they can do offense and defense and simulate a game experience. With all those different features, it sounds like a pretty cool design project. Well, I have to head out to the athletic field next, talk with some athletes, I need to do some more research. I need someone to join me. I'll go. What's up, Kelsey? Hey, Robinson. Hey, Kelsey, I'm Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. So Kelsey's a soccer player here at Assabet Valley High School. So Kelsey, we're thinking about designing this product that allows you to play soccer by yourself, practicing shooting, fielding, trapping the ball, passing it. What do you think? That sounds good. Yeah? yeah? What do you think? I think we should take into consideration the large field area, the velocity and trajectory of the ball. All right, pretty smart. How about you take net, Robinson? Kelsey, fire away. Looks like she needs at least 12 to 18 yards away from the goal. Well, there's not much of an arc on the kick. That's good. So if we have a batting cage style setup, we don't need to worry about the height too much. The center goal is 24 feet wide by eight feet high. So to be practical, we might even want to reduce the width in our design. That was fun. Well, thanks, Kelsey. Thank you. Robinson, time to talk some American football. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Bye, Kelsey. Bye, Robinson. Hey, Nate. What's up, Robinson? Hey, Nate, I'm Jeremy. Oh, nice to meet you. You too. Football player, huh? Yeah. So what position? I'm a quarterback. Quarterback, cool. So did you hear we're trying to make a practice machine for multiple sports? Oh, yeah, I heard that. Not easy to practice football by yourself, though, is it? Yeah, it's nearly impossible. Well, they make a machine that will serve the football to a receiver pretty easily. A coach will stand behind and feed the machine. Yeah. Not a really set up for a quarterback who's practicing his throwing. Right. What do you think? Well, I think we should definitely make something that can make long and even short passes. Also, adjust the speed on those two. Sounds pretty good, huh? Yeah. All right. How about you run a few routes? There needs to be a good distance between player and net. We're not gonna be doing Hail Marys in this thing, but we need to account for long passes. Well, if we use a net to catch the football, we also need a system to roll it, orient it, and return it to a load position. Should be a fun design challenge. Well, maybe you can borrow some design inspiration from those small targets they have at shooting ranges. When's the last time you've been at a shooting range? I don't know, I guess I saw it on TV. Well, it'd also be cool if we could further simulate game experience with defenders and obstacles, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Do you think we'll make it back? I don't think so. <laughs> that was cool. Thanks, Nate. Hey, no problem. Where are you guys heading next? Well, we're going to check out some hockey equipment. Sounds fun. All right, see you later, Nate. <sighs> later, guys. They got a water fountain over there? No, no, let's check it out. What's up, Cody? How, How you are doing, you, Robinson? Good, thanks. Hey, Cody, I'm Jeremy. Hi. Nice to meet you. You too. So Cody's a hockey player here at this school. Cody, we're trying to design a new 
cool practice cage for you guys, okay. athletes. Hockey's one of the sports we're considering. Basically, if you were to use this product, how would you simulate gameplay in hockey? Well, hockey, you're always moving, so I think it'd be cool if you could get a lot of movement for it. Well, we could definitely do something like that with the launcher, you know, controlling how it shoots pucks back to you. I don't want you losing an eye, though, because safety's <laughs> concern here. Yeah. What else could we use? Well, maybe we could add in, like, a scoreboard feature that would record points as we hit targets. Okay, I like that idea, too. That'd Sound good? Cool. Yeah. All right, before we get too far in designing this thing, let's just watch you shoot a few, and you can be in net. So he's about 15 feet from the goal. My guess is that ball is traveling up to 70 miles per hour in some cases. The net will definitely have to be able to absorb a major impact. For all the sports, our machine's definitely gonna have to recognize different size and shapes of balls. And also, if we put in targets, we could go both low corners and top shelf. If we designed an adjustable launcher, we could also simulate one-timers. Are we getting one of these cages? Well, we're gonna design one of them. This guy might actually make one. He's got the machine shop. Yeah, sure, I'll see what I can do about that. Guys, I gotta go, thanks. It's been cool. All right, see, see you, Jerry. Dude, you need an ice pack or something? All right, it's time for you guys to vote. We need to know which two sports we're gonna build into the cage. Before the next episode, I'll make some sketches and post them up on the site, and I'll announce that on Twitter. One important note on this project is we're gonna do a digital prototype only. That means more time for CAD, more time for simulation. So get your comments in. We'll see you next time on Let's Go Design. Dude, are you okay? No. Let's go get the nurse. Okay, give me a hand. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, let's go.